Hi, welcome to HTML session. Today we are going to discuss about frames. How do you create frames in HTML and what are the some of the uses of it? So we will start with the syntax of frame and then we will take it from there. Okay. So let us see that. So frames you start with a tag called frame set. So you start with this tag, you declare one frame set tag, we will also see an example and then you close and inside this you will create your various frame. Now frame set has some attributes as well like rows, columns, means how many rows you want and each rows will have how many, what percentage each row will take and if it is columns, like if it is a vertical frame then it will be columns. If it is a horizontal frame, then it will be rows. So like rows is like you want to create a frame like this, one, two and three frames. Columns, it will look like one, two and three columns. So that is the way it works, right? The syntax is very simple. You go inside head. The only thing you have to be careful that frame set should be put inside head. It should be, it should not be put inside body. So don't put inside body, otherwise it will not work. Okay. So important thing to remember here, not inside body okay not don't put inside body tag otherwise it will not work not inside body tag okay sorry for my handwriting and then let us see that how the syntax and the value for row and columns can be specified in pixel or as a percentage of parent frame. So you can say I want rows, first rows of 20 pixel, next rows of 40 pixel width and another with 60 pixel or you can say 10 percent, 20 percent and 40 percent if you want three column. If you want two column then you can say 50, 50 percent. So that is the way it works. Now let us see one example. So where what I am doing here is that here is one bracket you need to put uh, double quotes. Now here what I said is one small example. I say HTML head frame set, okay? Because for frame set you don't need a body. No body tag is required. Now here I am saying that please create frame sets with two column. First is 200 pixel, other is 400 pixel. So this is 200 pixel. and this is 400 pixel and this is 400 pixel okay so this is the width of two columns next one is i want to create rows instead of column and this one you can do same way 200 300 400 or you can do another way please create 30 percent 30 percent and 40 percent so this one will take total 30 percent of the total this one will take 30 percent of the total, total is from here to here whatever and this one will take 40 percent of the rem total. So that becomes 100 percent. So this is also the way to put either you can put pixel or you can put percentage in both rows and columns. Now let us see one example and few other things. So frame sets, once you define the frame set, inside the frame set you have to declare frame. Now how does the frame tag work? So frame tag starts with few things called frame and it has a source, name, scrolling, margin width, margin height and the syntax goes like this. 
frame set you know already next is this frame so this is what you start with this one we have already understood that there will be rows and column now frame source value put it so that inside that frame from where that content will be loaded so that is what frame source will so source equals to value and if you want to give some name of that frame you can give the name to as well you want that frame if the content is more than the width or height of the frame let us assume you have 20 page doc uh, 20 line content and that frame can see only four line at a time then you want to put a scrolling so that user can scroll inside the frame and see the value margin width what is the width margin which will have for that frame margin height so margin width and margin height is the gap between two frames which you want to produce so let us assume that you want to give the content inside that frame should give a gap of five pixel around them compared to other frame so if you want to do that in the width it is this margin height is the same thing but in the height sense and then you close it and put this so this one is the this is the where the content is pulled up so value is most important you and here generally you will write the name of a HTML file so what it means is that it will load whatever name you give here this HTML file name here and will load inside that frame so that is what frame it means now let us see one example here is an example what I have we have done is that we have created a frame set with a column and there is a two column I have created 30% and 70% okay now sorry it is not column again my mistake it is rows okay because uh, the output is for rows okay so 30% and 70% now next what I am going to do is that since I have two rows first rows is a frame with a source equals to a3 dot htm name is first horizontal scrolling is yes now a3 dot htm is a html file which will be loaded in first frame in the first row second is frame source equals to a4 dot htm and name equals to second horizontal so it means that it will be used for a4 loading a4 dot stm so that is name equals to second horizontal okay and that is the way it will load this one Here is the example of same thing column 30 percent 70 percent you can do this way and uh, this inside this column there is 30 70 there is another column so this is called nested frame this is called nested frame inside frame you can have a frame okay so this is one frame set inside that you are putting another frame set see okay inside this frame set there is a frame and inside this frame you are putting another frame set and which has again frame so this is called putting frame inside frame set and then inside frame another frame set so this is called nested frame set and you can try it using like that as well here is example of same thing you can have frames in a nested way You can also link a frame to the home page or some other link. Okay. This 
there is another concept called target attribute which is very important generally what happens when you click the link it will load the target link or the page in the same window where the original link was there but it is also possible that you can have two frames and multiple frames and you can say that I want this link to be open in a particular frame and that is where attribute target is used concept is useful now with that one it is something like let me just show you what I, I try to mean by this target so let us assume that I have three frame okay frame 1 I have frame 2 and this is frame 3 now here I have a hyperlink 1 hyperlink 2 hyperlink 3 okay now this is my hyperlink 3 what I want is that when I click this hyperlink the page should display into this one but when I click this link the page should display in this frame okay so this is frame 1 this is frame 2 and this is frame 3 okay when I click this the HTML page is loaded into this frame when I click this HTML page is loaded in this page how do you do that for that purpose you can use the attribute called target when you say target is frame 2 then this link will open in frame 2 when you say target equals to frame 3 then it will open in frame 3 so that is the concept of target Now in this session, we have covered images and inline images, list, bulleted and number, hyperlinks and anchor, tables, frames and all those things. Next session, we will discuss about what are the forms. So let us go ahead and discuss about our concept of using forms in HTML. Forms is very important concept. A form is a collection of fields on a page. What it means is that you might have seen that various forms that I want to submit a feedback, I want to submit uh, some information, I want to contact a company, I want to send a resume, I want to update the resume. So they create the form. So what form is that? There are very simple. There are three parts. One part is that where you will collect the input from the user and the other part is that where somebody will click submit so that the information is sent somewhere and the top most important part is that a address to a page to which all that information is sent to so let us see that there are three parts one part is in a, any form there is three part one part you can say that where you will say that it is you capture all the input okay from the user so there is input and the other part is submit so you will click the button called submit and it will work okay and the third page is called action what it means is that when you want to submit this input what action will be taken so this could be the location of another html page on the server to which you are sending this whole input when the submit button is clicked so we will understand about how to do the action how to do the input and how to do the submit and this form fields refers to the input part okay so just keep in mind that there are three high level very high level there are three parts now there is a concept called form handlers which collects information from the form it is used to store the data submitted by the user into a text file the data can be retrieved as and when required Forms are classified into 
three part form header input field and action buttons and this is what I was trying to explain few minutes back so it starts with how do you create a form it is start with a tag called form and the syntax is very simple HTML body form is always inside the body so it is always inside this okay so don't put form outside the body and then you put something form elements which we will understand very soon that is called input fields and then close the form and that is pretty much it. So, at a high level the syntax is form, form elements and form, but inside form elements little bit more detail is required. So, we will see that. Okay. Now, here is some text which is there and it says that we are going to create a simple form header with using helps creating form header. So, we are creating a header for the form this is not the form ok we will create form wait. So, right now we have just created one small table and inside that table we have given a caption called application form. So, this is a app caption for the table. Now, inside that we will create input elements inside the form. Now, what are the various kinds of input elements inside the form? You, if you remember here, the, here you are going to put the all the input elements. So, this is where input fields will come. Okay. And action button comes at the end of all of this. Last action button will come here, just before the form button closes and form header you can put it anywhere you can put here or here it is up to you ok. Now, let us get into the input elements what are the various input elements. So, input elements are nothing but you have seen in the form the user is entering the data in a text box or a radio button or a drop down list or a check box all those things are the input way to capture the data from the user. So, it could be a text box or anything. So, every input element has these starts with a tag called input, ends with a tag called input and each input element will have few attributes called type, name, value, align, size, max length. Type is it could be a text, it could be a password, it could be a multiple option check box or all those things. Name is just a name given to the input element value is is there any default value you want to provide let us assume there is a text you want to provide a default value so that if user does not enter that is the value it will take align is whether how you want to align this input element inside that form you want all the text and everything right aligned then you put right so that is the way size what is the size of the display part of that text box. So, size will be let us assume that I want 20 characters and max length is 40 character. It means that the text box will show 20, but if you scroll it will have 40 characters at the end. Okay. So, you understand the difference between size and max length. Button, it is the custom push button, input element can be a button, type can be a button type can be a check box and all of those things are possible type can be a image type can be a password. So, all of these are the type of input element type can be a radio. So, option radio reset button submit button. So, basically here what happens is that all of these are going to be a value of type these are type of input elements. So, that is what you have to mention that these are type of input elements. Okay. Now, here is one example. So, what we have done is that we have created a input type and the type we have taken is text max length is 30 size is 30. What it means is that 
this will be 30 character and the data you can input is also 30 character but if you put it here 40 let us assume that i put here 40 okay the max length is 40 what it means is that this length will remain 30 but number of characters you can input can be 40 so it will scroll this side or this side depending on how you are scrolling is there a default value no there is no default value it is blank so there is a blank here okay give some name e name one inside so that later you can refer to this input field in javascript or other situations so this is just an example of how you can create this form here is another example where the input type is checkbox okay and name equals to education value equals to graduate checked this is the important thing so it checks means it is checked another input type equals to education checkbox name is education and value equals to postgraduate postgraduate the important thing is here is that this one you check this one right and this one this has to be the same if you want this to be on the same position otherwise it will come on a different one so the give same name to both so the, they become a part of a group so name is education so checkbox is this or this so either it is this one it will check or this one it will check you cannot check both now there is a radio same thing if you see the multiple either you can be select male or you can select female if you want that behavior then you have to give same name here gender gender if you give a different name then they become a different set of input data point so both can be turned on or both can be turned off but you don't want that you want that either one of them happen so this are this is a part of the group this is called what is the difference between a radio button and checkbox in radio button you can select only one at a time in checkbox you can select multiple but other than that what you have to do is the giving the same name make sure that both of them goes as a part of single input of a checkbox it is not different it is not different okay so give the same name give the same name for radio button as well then it will go as a single input with male or female here it will go single input either graduate or postgraduate or both or none of them so here the possible inputs are either graduate or postgraduate or both or none of them so that is what the user can do you can also do a, a input which user cannot see so that if somebody is sitting beside him he cannot see what is the input he is doing now in that case what you can do is that you can declare the input type as password okay and name as salary and when you will enter that data inside this it will all look like a star a star a star what it means is that the user is entering a data which is not visible from the browser but browser is going to capture the data so this is the way to do it password you put password type and it will not visible to the user sometime what happens is that you want to enter multiple line of text not just one line or two line I, I want to enter 10 lines of text how you do that and that is where the tag called text area is very important you can say text area span to this many rows in this many columns and do you want to wrap like if it is line is very long should I scroll to the left and right or should it wrap so that I don't need to scroll so that is what is about rows columns and wrap you can say wrap as off you can say virtual you can say physical the next input type which is very important for a form is called pull down menus what is pull down menu pull down menu means let us assume that you are filling a form and you have to select the state from where you belong 
Now, states from where you belong, instead of letting the user type, it is a good idea that create a pull down menu and from that you can select the state and it will work. So, there is a tag is called select and option option. So, let us see how it works. So, first you have to do is select tag and give some name, any name is fine. And next is option. Inside option, you will say option 1 again option say option 2 and this one like this. Now, how this will work? You see this here, okay? option, option 1, option 2 and that will look like a, a drop down box inside which you will see option 1 and option 2. Now, once you create this input types, next is that submit this input type and input type has to be submit and value equals to submit. What it means is that input type is submit means that when you click that button a action will be triggered and what is this value value is nothing but something which will be visible on the top of the button you can change here and you can you cannot change this one so this one is fixed you cannot change but this one you can change you can say here click me now you can send any text you want to display to the user that is what you will do it so submit button has an attribute called type and value Reset button also has an attribute called type and value. Reset what it does is that it clears the all the data entered inside that form by the user so that he can again re-enter. So here it is, right? Input type equals to image, source equals to click button dot jpg click me. So you can also put an image button where you, when you click it will work like that. Now, let us see the form tag, what are the, so now we have covered, let us recapture, okay. In the form, I mentioned that there is something called action, and these are called input elements, in the, in the, inside this, there is a lot of input element and then you have submit button okay now so far we have seen this one we have seen submit button now we are going to talk about action tag okay and that is where we come about method attribute and action attribute the syntax looks like form action equals to method equals to and name so, here it is very important thing to understand. First is easy. So, name is very easy. It, you just give some name of the form. It does not matter. You can give any name. Method is called post or get. So, basically how you want to send that data to the server is get or post. So, f get and post has a different way to do it. Get sends the all the data as a part of URL post sends all the data as a part of the header in the form itself. So, post is little secure and better, but get is also used by number of websites. Next part is action. What is action? This action is very important because in this action you are telling the website that whatever data user has entered, please send all that data to this website or this page. So, all the data which is entered in the input by the user is sent to this page and that page then will do the processing for those inputs. Now, that kinds of completes the session for form tag. You can try out the same code as given in the slides and work out. Now, here we complete the session on form. So, here we complete the session for form.